Hello, and welcome to episode three of Building KDE Software from Source Code. In the first two episodes, which if you haven't seen, I recommend going to first. It's in the description box down below and in this playlist. Uh, in those first two episodes, we got our machines prepared for uh, compiling KDE source code, and we actually put KDE source build, that magical do-it-all-for-you tool, uh, into action. There's a few things that we need to do first, however, before we can actually take advantage of the software that KD Source Build has built for us. Now, you will remember that we didn't install it uh, in the system-wide uh, directories that the operating system puts it in, usually in slash user. We, uh, or I put it on my machine anyways, in opt KDE4, uh, the default for KDE Source Build is to put it in your home directory, and that is a, an option that a lot of people uh, choose to go with. Now, when you're doing this, you need to adjust your environment because the shell and other tools won't know where to find it unless you do this. So there's two ways of doing it. Uh, one is if you're going to access this software a lot while you're in your uh, desktop session, then you'll want to actually modify the login session file, which if you're using bash, which is typical on most Linux distributions, you'll want to edit the .bashrc. You might have a .profile uh, file or another file if you're using a different shell like the really amazing cool ZSH. But basically you want to edit the appropriate file in your home directory, usually .profile or .bashrc. And we're going to need to set up a few environment variables. So if you're also building Qt from source, which I do on my machine because, well, that's what I do, um, you'll want to set up Qt dir and point it to where you installed it. If you're just installing KDE software, which is probably what most people watching this are doing, you can skip that step. The next step is we, we will want to set up a KDE dir environment variable and point it to where we installed things. So in my case, opt KD4. For you, it might be in your home directory somewhere. We then want to add that to our path. And we do it with this line, export path equals KD dir dollar sign for slash bin colon and then path. This will enable the shell and other applications to be able to know where to look for the applications you've installed in this magical special other directory, opt KD4 in my place. We'll also want to set the Qt plugin path to include the kdir forward slash lib forward slash kd4 forward slash plugins. A lot of applications don't need this, but for applications that access plugins using the Qt plugin mechanism, this is really important because it uses the Qt plugin path to be able to find these things. So it can't hurt to add it, and some applications will actually not run properly unless you do. Finally, you'll want to add package config path, uh, or, the, or I should say the KDE dir lib package config to your package config path, um, as well as Qt dir lib, and then adding your package config path onto the end. And what this does is package config is one tool that is used by uh, some build systems to actually find libraries and other bits and novels that they need to build. But with these environment variable set up, you're good to go. Now I put in my bash RC. So every time I log in into this desktop session, it's already set up for me. But you may not want that. You may only want to have these other paths and whatnot uh, in your session uh, when you're actually working on this you know, KD software. Maybe you want to uh, help test or debug a specific application. And you don't want it always in, the, in your path. So I actually have exactly that situation here. Um, in the Frameworks 5, which is the upcoming release of KD Libs here, uh, major release I should say, uh, I have a KD or KD K Frameworks 5 env KF env um, file, and I'll just cat it really quickly here so you can see it, and it has all of these same things in it, all of these environment variables including a few extra ones that I'm using uh, in my build. But you can see I've got um, you know, the plugin path and such things, um, including, and also the LD library path, because that's sometimes useful. Um, and instead of in Firmix 5, as you can see, instead of uh, KD dir and all of this, we have XTG data home, etc. And you can see I've got my, uh, 
my install directory, which is optkde5 for, for these things in Frameworks 5. Now the way I, I set my environment, and this will happen only for this console session. So if I have another console tab, even when I modify the environment in the first one, it won't be here. So it keeps it completely separate from everything else that's running. It's really great for testing. All I do is I hit dot or period and, and do kf5env, hit enter, and now all of these environment variables are set and my uh, environment is set up for building and using my Frameworks 5 stuff. So you can do something very similar with these environment variables in a script sitting somewhere, maybe in your build directory as well, that you can source like this um, on an as-needed basis. Okay, so at this point we're now ready to go. And we can tell that we're, we're getting our, our uh, binaries from the right place by using the, the which command. Mm, so I can say which pick me was is a new KDE game, and, and it's indeed getting it from opt KDE for bin pick me. If I hadn't set it up right, it would be pulling it from some strange place or maybe from user, which is not what I want. So this is a really easy way to make sure that what you've done worked. Speaking of pick me and KDE games, at the end of of episode two, we had actually set off KD games to build. And I didn't wait for it to finish because it's like 40 something packages. So I just let it run in the background. Um, it did finish, however. And I like to show the results of this um, in terms of log files. So KD source build goes through and does a whole bunch of magical things behind uh, the scenes, behind our back almost. And uh, sometimes you want to know what it's done well and what it hasn't done well, um, basically if it's broken or if you want to actually get in and, and see what's happened. So inside the log directory, in the source directory that we have, uh, this is where KD source build puts all of its logs. And you'll find one for each day, uh, sometimes more than one for each day, that you've built something since the last time you cleaned it out. There will also be a latest directory which contains symlinks to the latest build of each of the applications. So these symlinks will point into different uh, folders here, depending on when the last time you actually built them uh, was. So I'm gonna go down to the pick me logs, and we'll see that there are indeed a bunch of log files here. This is the standard uh, set that KD source build makes. There's a CMake log. We know CMake because we use that in episode one to build KD source build uh, to get ourselves going. And then there's Git. We also use Git in the episode one briefly to do a Git clone. Um, and KD source build does all the Git and stuff for you automatically. But thankfully for us, it also keeps a log of everything it's doing. Um, from installing to making to building the whole bit. Now, this can be useful. So if it fails at any point, KD source build, it will give you uh, output right in your console uh, from where you run it saying it broke at this stage, here's the, the error. Now the CMake log, if it doesn't get past configuring, if it hasn't actually started to build the system, say something was missing that was required, the key will be in the CMake log. Now the CMake log, and this is a successful run here, so there's no errors in here, but it tells everything that happened while it was setting up the build. So it looks for where is where is Qt, where is the KDE libraries, where is, you know, things like remove and sh mats and X open display and all these things, Perl, phone on in this case here. It performs a bunch of uh, platform tests um, and then generates the build files. It also says here, if you notice, it found KDE games. And this is a requirement. If it had failed to find KDE games, it would have failed and just the build wouldn't have happened. And KDE source build would tell me, oh, we, you know, CMake failed and here was its failure message. But I can also come in here and get more details and see exactly what did succeed and what didn't. For a module, say, like KD Libs, which has, you know, 18 bajillion things it can use, libraries it can use, uh, you can come in here and see exactly which ones were found and which optional ones weren't found. Quite handy. If during build it fails for some reason, you can come to the build log, which is right here, 
and you can see exactly how the build went. Similarly, after it's built it, it's going to then install it. And the install log tells us everything that installed. What's nice is it also it gives us a file by file breakdown. So you can actually see what was installed and where right down to the individual file, should you care to know. This is really nice to ensure as well. If you're not sure if it's doing what you think it should be doing, installing to the right location, etc., you can see it all here. But what if I want to go in and actually start mucking around with things by hand? Now, I just said KD source build game, KD games, and let it go. I had no idea what it was doing, maybe. Well, this is where the Git logs are really useful. So we'll take a look at the checkout update log. Um, it said that my branch was 10 commits behind master, which means that when I ran this, I got 10 new commits. So I got new stuff when I built it. That's good. Um, if there's any failures in the bill in, in the Git um, update, again, KD source build error out, give you the, the failure message, but you can come into here and see it uh, in more detail. Um, one of the one of the interesting things and, and maybe one of the more useful bits of information here is the where it has put pick me uh, so every application or library that it builds um, inside the git checkout file you will find this path so if i want to go and visit pick me the source code i can come in here and just go cd boom pick me and there it is. So as we can see, it's in KDE, KDE Games Pick Me. This mirrors the path on projects.kde.org. But things can sometimes move around. Um, so for instance, we have the KDE Review area. And things that are in KDE Review will appear in here. When they move out of KDE Review, the next time I you know KDE Source Build Plasmate, uh, it'll be in its new location. I might not know where it is, but that's okay because I can come to the latest in here uh, logs. Um, actually, go to my file manager here, go to the latest, go to Plasmate, and I can actually look up the update log for it and see which directory it's now in. So I can go and I can muss ar muck around in the source code. So here is pick me. It shows all the source code, the themes, everything is in here. So I could actually start working on things. Um, this will be important in the next episode when we start looking at things such as applying patches from review board. Uh, so we're going to start to look at more getting involved bits and pieces in the upcoming episodes. So it's important to know how to get here. Now, I'm in my source directory. It'd be kind of nice to be able to jump to the build directory if I want to do something by hand there as well. And on TechBase, uh, David Four has contributed a huge amount of information um, and little tools that make all of this easier. For instance, there's a magical little macro um, called CB for change to build that switches directly to the build directory for pick me and CS, which moves me back. Now, if I go back here to my bash RC, um, I should find, there it is, CS and CB. They're really simple little bits um, and it makes life easier. There's uh, a whole bunch of these little useful tools and tidbits and, and shell tricks, including some Z, Z uh, shell specific ones on tech base. So there'll be some links in the description area uh, in that'll point you in the in the direction of those as well. And I find these things while you can you know go back and forth by hand, be able to jump between source code and build directory is by you know with these little CSCB is tremendously cool. And just to show you how it works, if I come to you know the the um, know, let me go to K Naval Battle, I'm now in K Naval Battle source code. I can jump directly to its build directory. I can jump directly back to its source code. So now we have not only built KDE software from sources, we uh, are able to find the log files to troubleshoot things if they fail. We can find out where they are, um, and we can also run them because we've set up our environment well. In the next episode, we're going to start looking at some tools to actually start getting involved a little bit more in KDE software development. Um, in particular, we're going to take a look at some of the things that are useful for helping testing uh, in the process of quality control, quality assurance, debugging, etc.
So look forward to see you in episode four, and I hope that this episode was useful and enjoyable. Cheers.